Hey there weavers, welcome back. This is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving. Thanks for joining me in my studio today. I'm starting a new project that I have designed. These will be a set of placemats. Now, a while back I designed, or I wove, um, some placemats in a plain weave in a log cabin. So this we are going to take to another level. So we're going to do something similar to this in part of the structure, but we're going to uh, create a log cabin design like this that is nine squares. And we're going to alternate that with a plain weave. And then we're going to add a little more complexity to it and we're going to make this a double weave. So what you will end up with is a log cabin of nine squares and alternating with plain weave in a light green. And then on the back, those will be reversed. So it's a double weave with a color and weave. We're gonna be using some of the same colors that we did before going to be using the, uh, I believe this is the uh, moss green, and this is the uh, tan, and this will make up our log cabin, and we're calling this nine patch. So this is a draft that is out of the Carol Strickler book. It is draft number 683. For the plain weave segments of the placemats, we're going to be using this emerald green. And this is 3-2 mercerized cotton. So it's a little bit bigger than uh, what we normally work with for the dish towels, but uh, it just gives a nice feel to our placemats. Now to thread this, we're going to be using eight shafts and we will create uh, one layer on one set of shafts on shafts one through four, and then the alternate layer will be on shafts five through eight. We're going to be alternating these three colors over four threads. So the first set of repeats is going to be, this will be medium, this will be dark, this will be light. So the warping order is going to be uh, medium, dark, medium, light, medium, dark, medium, light. So obviously the medium I'm using a lot more of. I'm using two threads per repeat. So what I have done is I have wound off um, the amount I need to warp onto another bobbin so that I can warp uh, two at a time here. And then I'm going to warp onto my warping board four threads held together. Now, as I've done in the past when I've done this, I am going to keep all four threads in the same cross. I'm not going to make a separate cross for every single thread. And then when I Put this onto the loom, I am just going to pick the thread that I need based on my pattern. So it sounds a little confusing and it sounds like it could be a threading nightmare, but it isn't. It's very simple. Um, if two threads cross over each other back behind the heddles, it's no big deal. They'll work themselves out. So let's go ahead and move over to the warping board and we can get started. All right, so you can see here, I've got my spool rack set up. I have my spools of yarn set up down here on the floor and I have my warping board here set up on the wall. Now I've got this uh, measured out to three and a half yards and I've got my uh, path string on there and we will just go ahead and start warping. So the first thing I'm going to do is 
I've tied all four threads together with a knot right there. And I'm not going to create my normal uh, slip knot loop here because when I separate these four threads, I can loop that over my peg up there. So I put a finger between um, each thread and then I'll just slip this over uh, my peg there. Now I'm going to try and keep my hand in this flat position the entire time that I'm warping. And that should keep everything aligned. And then we'll just follow my warping string around. And let's see if I can figure out how to do this cross down here. There, that works. So the key is to just kind of take it slow. Don't get um, everything tangled up. And you can see I'm leaving all four threads in that cross. And then when we uh, pull them to thread them, we'll just pull whichever one we need. Warping four at a time is going to go a lot faster. Um, I had originally contemplated uh, winding each color separately um, and then uh, warping from front to back. And uh, that would have worked just fine, but I am all about trying to be efficient so I figured that this is the more efficient way to do it. It's a little slower um, for each pass, but it's much faster than winding four threads individually. So we need, uh, I believe we need 300 and some threads for our warp. And I'll have to figure out what that is before I get too far. Because I like to divide my warp evenly so that when I'm uh, winding onto the back beam, I can tie them in equal bouts and weight them. And I have a knot here in the dark green. So I need to take that one and move that knot up to here. So we'll just park these down here. And then you can see I've got a knot there. And just untie that knot and then move it so that it's up here at the turn because we really don't want any knots in the middle of our project. That would not be good. Sorry, pardon the pun. Wonderful. That's better. Pushed in. So I'm trying not to um, stack the threads on top of each other. I'm trying to keep equal tension on all of them. 
you're not going to get absolutely equal tension um, across it, but you just you do the best you can. Um, it's a very forgiving uh, yarn as far as um, when you go to weave it, uh, if there's a little extra slack here or there, it's not a huge deal. So I'm going to stop here at the top and I'm going to count my, how many threads I have threaded or measured out and how many I need. So I will be right back. Okay, so sometimes things work out for the best. I'm already done with a quarter of it. That was fast. So we'll go ahead and uh, put the uh, Wonder Clips on here and chain this off and then we can start on the next one. Cut that. And I will just toss that over there for the moment and then we'll chain this off. Um, so I'm going to start my chain from the top and then chain down to here because this is the corner that I am going to put um, on my back beam. Um, I do not tie my ch my warping chains um, every yard. Uh, I have found that chaining it like this works great for me. Um, if you like to tie yours, go for it. I just am lazy. <laughs> That's the honest truth. Okay, so there is the first one. So, while I finish measuring this warp, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. In the next video, we'll warp the Ashford 8 shaft table loom from front to back with this project. Until then, thanks for watching and happy weaving.